President of the Republic of Kenya, Rigathi Gashagwa, my colleagues, the CSS, Ministry of Education, Water and Sanitation, the principal secretaries, and all our technical teams, Your Excellency, especially the technical team for this uh, high-level platform, I want to recognize the great work that uh, Ibrahim has presented here. I think they have captured the reasons why we are here very well and highlighted what we need to do and where we are. Allow me, Your Excellency, and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak ahead of the, my other colleagues. Uh, His Excellency is in Kibira at 11, His Excellency the President, and therefore I appreciate you allowing me to speak ahead. And therefore, say just a few remarks, Your Excellency. I believe my technical teams are here, Lillian. The director, Lillian, is here with the, the other, yes. Those will be able to handle the technical issues and uh, of the programs that we are handling as listed. It is uh, a great honor, Your Excellency, to address you today as the chair of this forum to highlight the implementation status of the donor-funded program under my ministry that are a matter of subject in today's discourse, all being implemented through the State Department for Housing and Urban Development. Uh, Your Excellency, although we are covering today the 10 counties, we have we are working beyond the 10 counties and because our program is one, allow me, even if I touch on the others, uh, that uh, is still within the presentation. The programs, the programs Kenya Urban Support Program and Kenya Informal Settlement Improvement Program, that is KISIP and KUSIP, are now on their respective second phase of implementation. This is largely as a result of the resounding success a need that remains unmet in supporting urban institu institutionalization and urban infrastructure, as well as improving our informal settlements. Uh, Your Excellency, allow me to give a brief overview of the respective programs. The Kenya Informal Settlement Improvement Program aims to improve the living conditions of people living in informal settlements through provision of security right tenure upgrading of infrastructure and enhancing livelihood opportunities and support towards institutional capacity, building for slum upgrading. Your Excellency, I found myself in trouble with the word slum upgrading when I was being vetted, and therefore we will still need to think about this as a, as a, plan, as a forum and as a state department. Parliament was not very happy with that, that word or description. In KISIP 1, which was implemented in 14 counties, was jointly financed by IDA, IDA, through the World Bank at a cost of US dollars 98 million. And then AFD gave us 38.5 million US dollars, and CEDA gave us 8 million US dollars. The government of Kenya provided the 10% uh, of that funding, the counterpart. As a result of the success of KISIP 1 and 2 was designed to reach more settlements, population, and then KISIP 2 is now funded to a tune of 191. In other words, Your Excellency, this amount was funded, was doubled for the second phase to the tune of 191.5 million, jointly by IDA or IDA sorry, and, and then at a cost of 142 million, and then AFD at US dollars 49 million. KISIP 2 is currently being implemented in 37 counties, and I, I won't go through all of them, the, the, that is the ASALS and others, because we have gone beyond, you know, like places like Mbu, Kisi, which are beyond ASALS, so a total of 37 counties. Uh, my teams will give the entire list. The Kenya Urban Support Program was implemented from 2018 to December 2023. The first phase was implemented in 45 counties, leaving Mombasa and Nairobi counties, and then benefiting 59 municipalities. 
the urban support program, Kenya urban support program was mooted to catalyze the establishment and operationalization of urban institutions and improve service delivery in our urban areas in line with Urban Areas and Cities Act. As a result, Your Excellency, of the success, of its success and drastic growth of our urban areas, KUSIP 2 will be implemented across 79 municipalities, 20 more than the initial ones, 59, and that therefore includes, within, within the 79 includes Dadab and Kakuma, uh, with a big population, Your Excellency, uh, being covered at those refugee camps. The program will run for five years from 14th March, and we launched this program at State House uh, 14th March to 30th June 2028. The new program, phase two, will have a cumulative amount of 350 million US dollars. Out of that, US 300 million dollars being the loan, while 50 million US dollars is a grant. KUSIP 2 will use two financing instruments, that is program for results, for financing of county level investments, and indeed the counties are critical and they are the ones doing the procurement and implementation. And then the other instrument is IPF, for national level activities related to the program in terms of management, Your Excellency. The, the P4R, that is program for, uh, for results, P4R will account for 90% of the total amount, meaning the only amount for management of this program is 10%, amounting to 25 billion US dollars. During the design of KUSIP 2, it was realized that refugee camps were home for huge populations. We have captured from our data, national data, about 378,723 refugees and asylum seekers living in the dark, and then another 274,920 reside in Kakuma refugee camps. And, and therefore, you, you can understand the attention that uh, we are now having for the two to be part of our program. The interventions with respect to KISIP program in Nendi counties are as follows. KISIP 1, under land tenure regularization component, land planning and titling was undertaken in Garissa County under KISIP 1, a total of 7,580 leases or titles in another word were prepared and attestation has been undertaken. I'm happy, Your Excellency, to report that issuance of the leases is in His Excellency, the President's diary for this month of September. KISIP 2, planning and survey is currently underway and various, in various stages of that is in Tana River, uh, Masabit, Trukana, West Pokot, Wajia, and the details of how many settlement schemes are in my presentation. There are quite a number. Under the infrastructure upgrading component, the program will include upgrading of roads, drainage, lighting in, the Wajia, in Wajia County, Lamu settlement, Lamu where we have six settlement schemes, the two counties have already procured contractors to implement the works and note and to note the governor Lamb County has already commissioned the works and we are working very well with most of the governors in these counties, Your Excellency. And I think the relationship should be encouraged and strengthened as part of our our maybe results expected from this meeting. All the Nedi counties will benefit from the slum upgrading all the 10 counties. In addition, as Aria mentioned, the project is assisting another 30, a total of 30 counties, including West Pokot, Wajia, Tanariva, Ramu, Madera, in the development of specific slum upgrading and prevention strategies. Under the first Kenya Urban Support Program, disbursements of 2.3 billion shillings 
for various infrastructure projects were made in the counties of Gadisa, Isioro, Lamu, Madera, Masabit, Saburu, and uh, Trokana and Wajia. Then the second uh, KUSUP 2 aims to upscaling and enhancing the implementation of KENAP, the National Urban Development Policy Program. And I'm glad that here we are dealing more at high level with policy, as well as strive to address the urbanization challenges in Kenya. Our urban areas are bedeviled with massive challenges uh, because of uh, mushrooming haphazard developments. Honorable Your Excellency, the window of the host communities and the refugee component for this program is for us a winner and should be supported and we are happy that it is part of this second planning. In conclusion, the key challenges faced under the respective programs are, for example, delays by counties in appointment of engineers, simple or administrative works like appointment of engineers and municipality managers and project managers. Other problems is delay in the location of existing services on construction we live. Sometimes it is necessary to remove to, to remove people in a way of displacement, but that cannot be done without participation of the county and that is something that we need to address as we are addressing the challenges facing us. Of course, through statutory approval of LP and LUDPs by county assemblies, especially, specifically Tana River has had that challenge. Low absorption of funds, Your Excellency, we will find across the board this is a big challenge for all of us, and I think no one person should uh, take the blame. We should all share the blame from state departments to the ministries. The partners sometimes also take too long to give uh, no objection uh, comments uh, and to and flow and also Treasury could take a very large share. I think Treasury should help us to fast track. Your Excellency, there are many other, my, my ministry proposes the following as interventions and I think this is where possibly we are that counties are encouraged to partner with other national government agencies that is Kura and Kera are critical and of course uh, energy ministry for purposes of infrastructure. Counties will, should interact with service providers for purposes of relocation and especially when it comes to moving way reefs or compensation. The project is engaging the county, the council of governors and I want to confirm that we work very well with Mary Mwiti and her chair. Anu Waigoro, Mary Mwiti, the CEO, the CEO of County of Governors, of Council of Governors. Your Excellency, finally, there is a big challenge because of the the county government's uh, additional uh, funding uh, uh, law that has to be dealt with. The disbursements of funds to the counties get stuck before this. Is, uh, is, is, is completed as an exercise. And I think that is something as a government we need to agree on how to deal with because it's becoming one of the biggest uh, uh, handles or barriers. Overall, Your Excellency, my ministry, specifically State Department for Housing and Urban Development, is happy that this forum took place today and we confirm our commitment